Hello and welcome back. In this episode we're going to be crafting some items. First of all, uh, take a notice onto the uh, uh, number right in blue, uh, number in blue next uh, to on top of the skill tree. It mentions how skilled I am in that discipline. You can boost that number up if you have if you carry in your inventory a manual that you can buy from the university in that dis of that discipline. That's the only way that you can meet the requirements for the uh, for the technical items that require a schematic, uh, schematic to make. Now this thing weighed a ton so we won't be carrying them around and they also cost about 750 gold coins. Now we are going to make a, a rifled cannon and for that we have to make a charge accelerator gun and for that we have to make a repeater rifle. First of all the repeater rifle, uh, there it is, we can make it easily from our knowledge. Second of all we go to our schematics, there we are, and make a charge accelerator gun with uh, items um, and finally a rifle cannon from an iron ore that Magnus just made for us. Now, and like that we have a very strong uh, very strong gun that will help us through some of the enemies that we will find in the next dungeon. Now, we will be storing those manuals until uh, in the warehouse where we clear the rats until further use, because we will be crafting again. We will be crafting quite a lot. This Panari Temple just will offer some insight into the lore of the game. So I'll leave the priest I'll leave the priest's mouth running, but you won't be missing much from it. As per video game logic, every single legend has to be true, right? Right now we're going to go to the museum, uh, not the part of the town that has two quests for us. Well, that is that is connected to technically three quests for us. First of all, this dragon skull will lead us to a dungeon of the lair of Belagorin. There are quite some nasty dragons there. That is no surprise. Second is the safe, which we can technically open right now using a fate point, but it won't make much sense and there's an easier way to open it when the time is right. Um, I'm sorry for the doubling of the music <laughs> right at this point. Now I want you to notice that this half-orc secretary is actually one of the few characters that is neutr neutral to us from the get-go. And if you look at our characters you'll see that Gar is actually equipped with a, pla uh, with a plate uh, armor. It's the only armor that Gar can actually use, and I only put it on him so that he wouldn't go around naked. I also equipped every single character with a balanced sword, two charged rings, and a flow spectrometer, so their defense rating right now is on average at 50. Now further down the line is actually the University of Tehran. First of all, there's this lecture hall that doesn't serve any practical purpose, but there have to be classrooms in the university. Next, there's the library, where one would logically think that one can buy manuals, technical manuals, but actually you just pay for a membership and that's about that. There's quite a few, quite some lore inside that library, but there's not much to it. Now. On the matter of technical skill books, those things, when equipped in your inventory just by having them with you, already increases your skill disposition 
by the amount equal to your intelligence. So having 13, uh, having 13 intelligence and having an electrical manual will rise, will rise our, our electrical knowledge from uh, 20 uh, from 25 to 38 just by having the book with us. Since we need 58 to make the charged accelerator gun, we just had to, we just bought two books with us and kept our in inventory. Those things are ungodly heavy, therefore we're going to have them stored with in the warehouse since items do not only disappear if they are left on the ground. Now we could have got the Elven Twin Skull quest from this individual, or we could have sold the skulls to him, since he is an expert on phrenology. Or we could have sold the skulls uh, and pickpocketed them back, so with that we get both the reward experience, the money from both sides of the equation. Now, th now this elf is involved in the in another very important quest, or at least very demanding. That will we will only be able to tackle from the second half of the game, more or less. But it's about the gods. Uh, specifically, we will have to be going on a pilgrimage. Okay, a pilgrimage across all of the continent, and since we won't be having access to a teleportation spell, it will be it will take far longer. Uh, it will take far longer than uh, than any normal playthrough would require. Well, that's just one point in favor towards magically aligned character. Now then, and the final part of the university is the place where you can actually buy the skill books, or the uh, technological books. With them, uh, they, they increase the your, your technological aptitude by a flat percent, uh, by a flat number equi equal to your intelligence. Therefore, even if you have zero points into healing or thaumaturgy or smithy skill as we have, we can s with five books and twenty intelligence we can make we can already craft any every single item of that discipline. At least those that require uh, at least those from that are from the schematics that we find, which we can uh, schematics which we cannot teach to our followers. Now then, after you read this, uh, after the you read this manual of the gods, uh, the next video will take us to some very to a very unpleasant level, and I will try to make it as short as possible.